Hello everyone. Today, we will explore how to use multi-level drop-down lists in Looker Studio. Let's start by understanding why drop-down lists are useful as control elements. They allow us to dynamically change the data displayed in our reports. Moreover, since control elements in Looker Studio filter each other by default, applying a filter in one list will automatically filter all subsequent categories in the other lists. This is how we create our multi-level drop-down lists, moving from higher to lower levels. Let's take a look at an example. This report is based on transaction data presented in an informational format. We have a breakdown showing what the transaction relates to, either income or expenses, followed by transaction categories and items. We've also visualized this data using three pie charts, the first level represents the global breakdown of income and expenses. The second level is by categories, and the third level is by items. How do we set it up so that the displayed data changes based on the selected category from the first, second, or third level? To achieve this, we add drop-down lists. These are added through the control elements by selecting Add a Control. Choose Drop-down list and place it on the report. Then, select the field you want to display in the drop-down list and the metric to be shown. If it's not essential to display the metric directly in the list, you can remove it. We start by adding the first drop-down list, then the second drop-down list, and set the following characteristic. Looker Studio automatically suggests a breakdown, for example, by categories. Next, we add another drop-down list that will contain items. As we can see, it's added automatically as well. We then adjust these lists to ensure they are visually pleasing and roughly the same size. Now let's see how filtering changes depending on our selections. For example, when we use one of the drop-down lists and select a value like income, we can observe that all other categories and charts are filtered accordingly to match our data. In addition to the charts, the values in the other drop-down lists are also filtered. For instance, when the list is fully populated, all categories and items are available. When we filter by an element, only the categories related to the first level where we selected income remain. And the same happens with our items. This filtering works both ways, from higher to lower levels and vice versa. For example, if we select a specific item, we can see how our charts change accordingly and how our drop-down list becomes narrower. Thus, we create multi-level drop-down lists starting from the largest category and moving to the smallest. I recommend arranging them in this order, from larger to smaller categories. This approach is often used in analytics, for example, when analyzing markets, regional sales, and similar data. In such cases, instead of transaction categories, you might use countries, cities, regions, and so on. Overall, that's everything you need to know about adding drop-down lists and how filtering works when multiple drop-down lists are added. It's important to remember that these lists must be interconnected in terms of data categories. If the data source does not have such connections, the lists won't filter each other. Give it a like if you enjoyed the video. If you still have any questions, ask them in the comments.